Hey everyone, I'm Kirby, this is Kirby Meets Audio, and today we're gonna to talk about the equipment I use in my current home audio setup. You might be aware, but I'm not really the biggest audiophile. Uh, my setup reflects that, I guess. <laughs> I don't spend thousands and thousands on my equipment because I, I think you can get pretty good sound on a budget. Good enough for me, anyway. <laughs> I guess I'm more of a budget audiophile. So I just wanted to make a simple video going over the stuff I'm currently using in my setup, and talk a little bit about each piece and what I think about it. Uh, I'll put links to everything that I'm talking about down in the description. But I also wanna hear about your guys' setup, so leave me a comment with the stuff that you like, the stuff that you can't live without, uh, and the stuff you think I should check out next. All right, so we might as well follow the signal path and start from the beginning, so let's talk about sources. So I have two basic listening modes that I like to get into. One that's a little more casual and kind of passive listening-ish and then one that's more critical and experience-based. When I want to sit down and have a listening experience, let's say one of my favorite artists just came out with a new album, I'll usually reach for a, a vinyl record if I have it. Uh, I was lucky enough to find my turntable at a garage sale for like 15 bucks. Uh, it's a Fisher Studio Standard. Though I did have to replace the stylus and they don't actually make that one anymore so that ended up being a little expensive. I think I paid like $150 or so for a new old stock one, uh, but it was totally worth it. Uh, this thing works great, sounds fantastic. No regrets. I'll add some links to my favorite modern turntables. For my casual listening mode, I'll usually stream via Bluetooth from my phone or laptop. Right now I'm using the Belkin HD. I actually went for the HD version because it offers a digital toss link out um, and that can connect directly into my DAC, uh, which we'll talk more about in a bit. I've actually had a DIY streamer using a Raspberry Pi on my build list for like a year. I have all the parts to make it, so keep an eye out for that coming soon. All right, moving on, the analog Turb table and the digital sources take two different paths for a little bit, so let's follow the analog first. My turntable does not have a built-in phono preamp like a lot of modern turntables do, so I'm running the Rolls VP29 Phono Pre. It runs about 50 bucks, and I think it's a killer deal for the quality, simple little preamp um, that's made here in the USA. It sounds good, I've never had an issue with it, and I've had it for like five years or so, so. Pretty good. That phono pre is then fed into my audio preamp, but we'll talk about that in a bit. All right, now let's talk digital. The signal coming from my phone via Bluetooth into the Belkin is then fed into my DAC via a Toslink cable. The DAC is a Bifrost by Shit Audio, that's S-C-H-I-I-T, uh, and it runs around $400. Although you don't technically need a separate DAC, this is a pretty important part of your setup. DAC stands for Digital to Analog Converter, and it's in charge of converting those ones and zeros coming from your phone or laptop into an electrical signal. And the way your DAC goes about doing that can and does impact the sound. I really like my Bifrost. It, it sounds great, it's made by a good company, and its internals are actually modular. Uh, shit updates the cards that go into this guy from time to time, and when they do, you can purchase the updated card and put it into your system you already have. It's basically future-proof, it's a, it's a good investment, and it sounds great. So now is when the analog and digital sources come together. The Phono Pre and the DAC are both connected to my audio preamp via a little switch also made by Shit Audio. Got a lot of shit stuff. The audio preamp is a LAR2, or LIAR2, I'm not totally sure, um, but I think I bought it new for around 350. Uh, it's a switchable tube and transistor amplified pre and a headphone amp. They don't actually make this amp anymore. Uh, they've updated it to the LAR3, uh, which is like a totally different piece of equipment that's actually pretty awesome. It's now a headphone amp, a DAC, and a phono pre all built into one. If you are looking for an audio preamp, I would suggest looking into the Shit Audio Saga. So now we have the signal boost boosted and colored just a little bit by the audio pre, but now it needs that driver moving power, and I'm currently getting that with the Dayton Audio APA150. It's a class AB power amp that pushes 150 watts into two channels at four ohms. I really like this amp, one, because it's AB topology sounds great, and it's really versatile. It can be played in stereo, it can be bi-amped for a mono output to a subwoofer, and it can even be daisy-chained if you need 
a lot of power. I'll also sometimes switch to a Topping TP60. This is a tripath amp that is a bit of a standout to me among digital switching amps in that it just sounds like really big. It's super beefy amp that uses pretty good quality components for its price point. It just sounds different to me from other Class D amps, and I, I just keep it around for that. All right, and that leads us to the main event. Um, I'm, I'm usually using whatever speakers were in my last build video, uh, and I'm currently using the kit speakers that we all kind of designed together in my latest design series, and they sound great in the setup. They're using really budget drivers with two TCP-115 woofers per channel and a TD-20F tweeter, uh, but you really wouldn't believe the sound that they actually put out. Um, these are still prototype models I made in that actual build video. So the crossovers are connected with alligator clips, all exposed and beautiful. And then on deck, I have my new Geofront baffle design speakers I made with Toyd's DIY Audio. Again, I wanna hear about your guys' setup, so hit me up in the comments, let me know what you're rocking. If you're interested in any of this equipment, there are links down in the description. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't yet. If you didn't like it, that's okay. Uh, I'm just glad you made it this far. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.